Hi, I'm Grant Moon. I'm here in Texas at Hoofwatch. I'm making an educational video for St. Croix Forge, doing shoe modifications to the St. Croix Shoe Fit Extra Horseshoe. What we have here is a St. Croix Shoe Fit Extra Horseshoe. It's a slightly wider web shoe. It's got upright heels to give more support. It's got a nice V crease to fit the nails. On the hoof side, it has a nice seating so we don't have any sole pressure and the heels are lightly boxed. We're going to put a roll toe on it, help break over, a toe clip, help shoe security. We're going to widen the heels with double fullering to make the heels, onion heels for more support and more ground surface. And on the reverse side, we're going to do some heavy boxing. First thing I'm going to do with this shoe is I'm going to mark where the toe clip's going to go. So what I'll do is I'll take a pair of dividers, I'll scribe the toe of the shoe, from the fullering, and I can see where the two scribe marks are, and I'll put a center mark in the middle. So now I've helped myself position my toe clip. What I'm going to do now to widen the heels is I'm going to double fuller this one. So I'm going to continue the line of the normal fullering and stop it just short of the heel, in line with the heel check. Then I'm going to put a second fullering on the inside edge and stopping in line with the heel check. So I start the fuller by picking up just a small amount to set the corner. And then I follow the inside edge, keeping it parallel so it joins up with the other fullering. So I pick up. Getting the depth the same as the other fullering. The smaller the movements, the more finished the fullering will be. We mark the second fuller. So normally when I put the inside fullering in, I start at the corner of the heel, I fuller parallel to the inside edge, and I normally stop just short of the heel nail. Walk the fuller, keeping it in contact with the shoe all the time. Working both fullering into equal depth. Now we can level the shoe. It's very important to overlap our blows where every hammer blow overlaps the last one. That will give us a nice flat surface. Now we can hammer box it a little bit because that will make it a little wider. Again, taking our time to overlap every hammer blow so it's really nice and smooth. I think about double overlapping my hammer blows. I don't have a, I don't lap the hammer blows past each other. They double overlap, so that's what gives me a spine finish. We've got the first heel complete, now we'll do the other heel. Start at the end of the full ring, pull it to the end of the shoe, and as I get to the heel, I drop the fuller down, so I'm just dropping the fuller down so the corner becomes the lowest point. I don't drop it down onto the corner. So it's come to the end. As you get to the end, just take the fuller down, so now that fuller, the, the corner of the fuller becomes the lowest point. Overlapping it. Fullering, so everything's overlapped. Overlapping the movements of our fuller, that's what makes the fullering really clean. Clean up the outside one again. And we're going to box, we're going to level it and box the outside edge. And we 
box to reduce the amount of grinding. Next, I'm going to roll the toe. So I'm going to visualize a line from the center coming around the edge, following the flow of the shoe, just past the toenail. So I'm going to follow from the center of the toe with a radius to the toenail. So I've visualized how I'm going to forge the roll toe. Once I've forged the roll toe down, then I can clip it. I'm going to hold the shoe across the heels. This just gives me a little bit more stability. And then I start forging into the edge, following the shape of the shoe, blending out as I get to this toenail. So I'll do it again. A little bit heavier in the middle, so I get more roll in the middle, blending out to the side. So once we've finished the roll toe, we could leave it like this and use the roll toe on the horse, or now we can continue on and put a toe clip combination. So when I go to clip a shoe, my body position is very important. So I line up my shoulder, my clipping shoulder, with the edge of the anvil. I put the shoe over the edge of the anvil, and this will depend on the size of the clip I want. So bigger clip, more over the edge, small clip, less over the edge. I hit the hammer into the corner of the anvil that will displace the material over the edge to create the, the material to make the clip. Once I've created the material, now I have to change my body position. So I'm changing my body position just by swaying on my feet to bring my clipping shoulder back in line with the clipping edge of the anvil. I start the base and I'll, once I've set the base, I'll draw the clip. This position makes it possible for me to be looking at what I'm hitting. Set my position right, my shoulder in line, I hit into the corner. Pushing the material into the corner, it'll go over the edge because it's hanging over. Once we've put, created the material, we can turn it over, we can level it, we can see the material we have to make the clip from. Now I'm going to sway, I'm going to put my body in front of the clip, I set the base, I'm not in a rush to draw the clip, I set the base first, once I've got the base how I want it, I come up the middle and make my clip. I have to go over it twice to get the clip I want and to forge out all the little marks. Every hammer blow overlaps the last one. Once I've clipped it, I'll turn it over. I'll turn the clip towards myself. This way when I level behind the clip, there's less chance of hitting it. And now I can go to the horn and I can set the clip into the edge of the shoe. Not hitting too hard and following the shoe around. So I'm overlapping blows to smooth it in. Level again. Set our clip. Set the clip to the angle of the hoof wall. We start at one corner and make a radius around, and that causes the clip to be radiused like the hoof wall. We've got the clip, we've got the roll toe. We have our onion heels. Now we need to fit the shoe, then we can do our final grinding. So we finished the shoe. Now we have to choose a nail. What I've done is I've paired the shoe with a Capewell 5 slim bed nail. So I'll just check the nail holes. We've got a good head fit, good shank fit and I'll just check my nail holes before I go to nail it on. <laughs>